portfolios. Consider two securities, A and B. We calculated their expected return standard deviations from their probability distributions. We could invest in security A and receive a higher return, but also higher risk. Or we could invest in B for lower risk, but accept a lower return. However, rational investors don't put all their wealth in a single security. They divide their wealth among a combination of securities to form portfolios. They form portfolios to gain the benefits of diversification. By forming portfolios of imperfectly correlated securities, they achieve a diversification of risk. All rational investors hold portfolios, so they're concerned with the expected return and risk of their portfolios. They view individual securities as possible candidates for entry into their portfolios. So they're concerned with what an individual security brings to the expected return and risk of their portfolios. So what does an individual security bring to the expected return of a portfolio? And what does it bring to the risk of a portfolio? Let's consider the expected return and risk of portfolios. Given two securities A and B, let's form a portfolio by dividing the investment equally into A and B. Let's let X sub A equal the proportion of portfolio invested in A. It's an equally weighted portfolio, so the proportion invested in A is 0.5. Let X sub B equal the proportion of portfolio invested in B. It's also 0.5. The expected return of a portfolio is a weighted average of the expected returns of the securities making up the portfolio, where the weights are the proportion of the portfolio invested in the security. We weight the expected return of each security by the proportion of the portfolio invested in that security, and sum across all securities. So let's calculate the expected return of our equally weighted portfolio. From their probability distributions, we calculate the expected return for security A and security B. We weight the expected return of each security by the proportion of the portfolio invested in that security and sum across all securities. The expected return of the portfolio is 23.5 percent. So what does an individual security bring to the expected return of a portfolio? An individual security brings its expected return to the expected return of a portfolio in proportion to its investment in the portfolio no more no less. Portfolio variance can be calculated using state contingent returns. The state contingent return of a portfolio is a evaluated average of the state contingent returns of the securities making up the portfolio. Given the probability distributions of securities A and B and their portfolio value weights, we can calculate the state contingent returns of the portfolio. In state 1, we weight the state contingent returns of securities A and B by their portfolio weights. It's an equally weighted portfolio, so the portfolio weight for each security is 0.5. We sum the weighted returns to get the portfolio's return in state 1. We do this for all states, and we have the probability distribution for the portfolio. We previously calculated the expected return for the portfolio, 23.5%. Given the portfolio's state contingent returns, their probabilities, 
and the portfolio's expected return, let's calculate the portfolio's variance. In each state, we calculate the state contingent's returns deviation from the expected return. Square the deviations from expectation. Multiply by the probability of the state and sum across all states to get the portfolio's variance, 161.5% squared. We take the positive root of the variance to get the portfolio's standard deviation, 12.7%. An individual security brings its expected return to the expected return of a portfolio. So the expected return of a portfolio is a simple weighted average of the expected returns of the securities making it up. So what does an individual security bring to the risk of a portfolio? Is a standard deviation of a portfolio a simple weighted average of the standard deviations of the securities making up the portfolio. Let's calculate a simple weighted average of the standard deviations of the securities making up the portfolio. We had their portfolio weights and their standard deviations. A simple weighted average of the standard deviations of securities A and securities B is 14.3% and it's greater than the standard deviation of the portfolio, 12.7%. This implies that an individual security brings less than its total risk to the risk of the portfolio. That some of its risk is diversified away. The important point. The expected return of a portfolio is a simple average of the expected returns of the securities making up the portfolio. But the standard deviation of a portfolio is less than a simple average of the standard deviations of the securities making up the portfolio. And this is the important point. Portfolio diversification does not merely lower risk, it gets rid of some risk and we'll examine this point further in the next topic.